Hello and welcome, ev welcome everybody to a kind of solo stream. I'm gonna be playing. Uh, wait, where? Oh, wrong one. Okay, give me a second. Oh, please don't crash! Please don't crash! Please don't crash! Please don't crash! Come on, there we go. Okay, we're gonna be playing some uh, Destiny, not on any of my fully completed characters, but on a whole new account. This will be. Uh, I've set up a new Xbox account specifically just for streaming that you guys will be able to send me friend requests if you play Xbox or if you want to just simply uh, keep track of how the progress we're making in the game you can do that too um, so let's get started It'd be nice if my controller would stop dying on me every five seconds for inactivity <coughs> there we go so three so the reason I'm starting a new a new account entirely for this it, primarily is just so that way I can explain some of the uh, design difficulties that were at the initial part of Destiny and talk about some of the uh, bits of story that were never included within the game but excluded, included in the external lore aka Grimoire where you'd have to go to another source to be able to access this information. So, we're going to be talking about that a little. I'm going to be talking about where they could have improved a little. And we're going to talk about how, overall, the reason people continue to play this game and enjoy this game is because, at the core of it, the gameplay is still very, very good. And it's very, very fun to play. Like, most... it Bungie is not a company that would go light on gameplay, at the least. It it's built with the same ideals and kind of beauty that was the Halo franchise. And you can still feel when you play the game. I'm gonna just expand my screen real quick. Take it to the full dimensions. Let's see. We'll go up to five. So that way you guys can see everything. Just in case it looks a little darker on your end. Uh, we'll enable subtitles. Yeah. Like, it, the game itself is a wonderful game at its core, but I feel like the beginning of the game is where it struggles the most with. They really improved with the later on parts of the game. We're going to play Titan, because I'm just, I love playing a Titan. It's just my core game style. Let's see. And we'll go EXO. Ooh, I like that face. Ooh, what some of the other faces are. Yeah, that's the usual face I go with on my main account. I like that one though. Let's try that one out. You go with. I don't have my choice of colors, which is unfortunate. Camo. I like the black. That does look good. No, I don't want to go with the red, though. What a blue. That feels good. I like that. What are these? No, I don't like those. See. Make myself a unicorn. That's the one I had on my main, but I'm not going to do that this time. Ooh, I like that. Some head trauma damage right there. Shows how fucked up I am. <laughs> See. Not these. Yeah. White would probably be best. I like that. I want to look dirty. That looks good. I like that. What do you guys think? Looks good? I think it looks good. We'll run with that. Let's 
So we're going to start off with the opening cutscene. Which establishes kind of a premise of... And a kind of ideal for the game. Where you start off with pretty much three astronauts finding their way to Mars. In search of something that has caught the attention of Earth. This is, I think, close in time to about 2050. In human time period. I think that's what it was. I'm sure they'll tell us in a second. Present day. I don't think it's exactly that. But whatever. Like, there's good bits of this that just raise questions of why and where. Specifically, the one astronaut that's wielding an assault weapon on Mars. So far we know that Mars is completely uninhabited, and therefore there should be no need for weaponry. That means that they've seen something that raises questions. Or that the Earth has seen something that raises questions. And this is why they've sent these astronauts out to look out for it. Actually, I think these are Japanese, because... There's a- you actually get to have one of their helmets as a item. And we finally meet the Traveler, which, based on the image, you can see it's raining on Mars. Something that's unnatural and unusual. To establish that this is not a being of normal existence. From that premise, we then move forward. We called it the Traveler. And its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy. A darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. But it was also a beginning. Now what it doesn't tell us is the many wars and beings that we came across during that time. Here's a big problem I have, is the bottom part. How many Grimoire cards you unlock purely by starting up a character, which you have no knowledge of why or what these are. They just, you just get them. Instantly. Part of it is because I have all the DLC, so some of that is my own kind of gift to myself. Um, but as I was saying, you have it never once mentioned the greater beings and even the gods that would claim the planets that we once had and the wars we'd have to fight to reclaim them. I mean, I could talk hours about Grimoire. Like, hours about Grimoire. There's so much story to this game that people do not ever know or realize that I just love the concept of. And Bungie's done a great job of building a world, they just didn't do a good job of showing it off. Or telling its story. And so we meet our ghost. Or a ghost. A ghost looking for a guardian. One that's been active since the collapse of the Traveler. Since the Traveler has gone dormant. Looking for one who is imbued strongly with the light. One that shows promise. Ouch. And he's been searching for a couple centuries now. We're a couple centuries since the first arrival of the Traveler. So we come through our golden age of prosperity, building research facilities within Mars, known as the Clovis Bray, to the libraries of the Ishtar archives on Venus. 
There you are. This is where you kind of learn you have no backstory because so you've been dead, you won't understand. and therefore your backstory no longer matters. This is fallen territory, which is kind of sad because I would love to, to be able to, to talk city. more about the races that you can choose from: the Awoken, the Human, and the Exo. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move fast. I wish I kind of picked the Awoken now, just so I can talk more about it. Actually, does fit together very nicely for the story. There's a lot Let's of it. Get inside the wall. I mean, right now we're in the Cosmodrome, which, if you look at the surround, the uh, area around it, you'll see lots of structures for launch pads and shuttle launchings. It became pretty much the crossroads for what would become the rest of the world. But then you look down below and you see the many desolate cars and vehicles that were just overturned, destroyed, and the damaged roads that once was. It shows the wars that were waged on Earth I even, bring you back just and how much had been we destroyed during the collapse. I mean, this was at once a great city. And a great area for exploration. Okay, I need to find you a weapon before the Fallen find we us. We to reach the stars. Quiet! They're right above us. Then we get just an ever so slight hint towards alien type here. And here. Fall and thrive in the dark. We won't. We need more light. I'll see what I can do. He keeps talking about the fallen, one of the races that are viewed by the darkness. And a few centuries of entropy working against me. Know how to use that thing. Eyes forward. Watch your tracker. All right. I just got a taste of fallen, fallen vandal and dre. Fallen are a race of alien known as the Elixni, beings that were once blessed by the Traveler themselves, but. The darkness came for them as well, and in their time of need, the traveler chose to run. To run, and they've ever since gone from their once great houses to being nothing more than scavengers and pirates. These fallen belong to the House of Devils, considered one of the more ruthless and dangerous of the fallen, but have fallen since to. There's more ahead. Infighting and keep it up. Desertion. A loot cash. Let's see what's inside. Oh sweet. Shotgun. Trip mines. Don't touch them. Huh. See the logos and markings of the fallen, and how much they've taken the earth. But we've driven them back even during the even during after the collapse, where we begin rebuilding and establishing a new home for us. 
We'll reset it soon, though. We'll be able to talk more about this. The Fallen have a tighter hold on this place than I thought. Just a little bit further. Let's hope there's something left out there. This was an old Cosmodrome. There's got to be something you can fly out of here. Oh, I'm in trouble. They're already starting to say Incoming! Fallen ships! This close to the surface. Move! Fallen had become so distraught within their own time that they would begin kind of almost torturing their people, creating the dregs. Two arms fallen because their other arms were capped. Almost only the opportunity to, at greatness, like the vandals and the captains, had moments of great uh, success. To, I'm picking up sides of an old jump it. ship. Unlocked a grenade. Could be our ticket Yay. out here. We'll get more into detail on that when I take orbit. Now I've got a grenade to fight with. Come in handy. There's a ship. Clear them out. Oh, we got a captain. First real challenge. See if I can get us out of here. It's been here a while. Hasn't made a jump in centuries. Yeah, We're lucky the fire have not completely picked the clean. Will it fly? I, I think I just like the Exos, just because the voice actor for the Exos is so great. Yeah, it's starting up. Okay, it's not going to break orbit, but it just might get us to the city. Now, above that transit. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. That would be an Archon Priest. Bringing you in. The one belonging to the Devils. So, based on Grimoire, the Fallen are described as we can come ruthless back scavengers, brutal and uncaring. They arrive on their massive catches in the wake of the collapse to loot and pillage our devastated world. They are hints of ancient nobility to the fallen, the scars of lost grandeur. The kells of their scattered houses still claim to be royalty, but they leave only grief and wreckage in their wake. Specifically the House of Devils, these are the scourge of the city, the shadow below our walls. 
This is the house that led the battle at Twilight Gap. The house we tell our children about to frighten them at when to behaving. The House of Devils have now devoted great strength to pillaging the Cosmodrome in Old Russia. Hunting for something buried below. If they are not held in check, whatever they find might prove the city's undoing. So our ship is a little damaged and beaten up. It can't exactly make to jumping speed, so we're gonna make our way to the last known home of humanity. And all those that stand behind the traveler. Last city. And where we also find the home of the, t of the guardians. The tower. The tower being a building separated from the rest of the city as a place for the uh, guardians to call home. To the people of the city, it stands as a promise that we can endure. The merchants and citizens who fill its plazas and halls are dedicated to the reclamations of our worlds as the guardians who venture into Welcome the darkness beyond. Welcome to the beyond. last safe city on Earth. The only place the Traveler can still protect. It took centuries to build. Now, we're counting every day it stands. And this tower is where the Guardians live. Loading, 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 loading. This is just you and me, Jonathan. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I'll try my best to answer them. If you have anything that pops into your mind about this game that you might want to know more about. And so begins the great flood of information. This is where I have a problem with the game design, is just how much information they just flood you the moment you drop into the tower. Because I'm going to deal with a lot of indicators and information that just pop up that is going to, for the most part, interfere with me moving around. I'm not happy about how... I just recently... Nicole just recently started playing this, and we set her up on her own account, and we found this to be much of the issue. Uh, game, I would recommend just buying the, uh, Legendary Edition. Costs about $60, or 40 if you can find it for cheap. Um, I think it's worth the investment. It's very much a shilling game where you just kind of, it's much, it's, it takes the mantra of, uh, mobile game, where you just get all these small little things. And, uh... What was I saying? Let's get started. Where you get little rewards just to keep you going. See, this is where I'm talking about, like, information overload. I was going to simply talk to the vendor here, and I'm being told to do this now, which is in take a look at my silver, which is a in-game currency that you can purchase. This, this currency goes towards buying... Uh, oh, I don't want to do that. Back... But, uh, yeah. It, it's a bit of a problem, in my opinion. It could have been designed better. You take care of that gun, Guardian. Give me a moment. I'm gonna mute myself right Howling on the field where he fell. Never gets better for some.
All right, I'm back. Um, and yes, you can play solo. A lot of the game you can play solo just on your own, but there are certain experiences that do require you play with others or will set you up with other players, where it will offer you matchmaking for cooperative play. Yeah. Since I also have the uh, collector's edition, I got a couple extra free things. Spark of light. Uh, we'll go over a little few things that the game just gave me. Uh, first one is the spark of light, an item that the game gives you to give you the opportunity to skip all of the bad parts of the beginning to get straight to the new content. We're not going to do that. We're going to go through the entire game and experience it for what it is. And it's going to be a trip. It's going to be quite rough. Uh, the other one was a new emblem, which is what people will see my name when they look at me, which I can show you later on. Uh, the other one are some shaders. I won't be able to access them yet until I reach level 20, which will be around when I finish the main story. I also got one free emote because of my collector's edition. Typically, you only get the point. We're going to get right to the point. We're talking. And then I get do 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 don't do can't touch this. As well as my ship, this is the ship we just recovered from our last mission, the Arcadia class jump ship. I like the way it looks right now, but they're gonna give me an upgraded and colorful looking one in replacement for this, as much as I don't want it. But you know, I'll get a choice in that matter. And I got a Titan Mark. It's one of the uh, clothing I well the one of your armor options this one typically gives you boosts towards upgrading your weaponry perks as well as it gives me a little discipline and uh, strength when I unlock those but I cannot wear it right now just because this is a level 20 item I won't be able to use it yet it also helps me with my other classes when I get that far subclasses with being a Titan I get two different subclasses I get striker which are typically kind of at close quarters, a fist is better than any gun with other abilities. We'll go into those as we unlock them. Um, and then I also have another subclass I'll unlock at level 15 called the Defender. A wall against which the darkness... A wall against which the darkness breaks. In other words, the... Um, much a mantra for Titans. Right now I'm equipped with a Kovstov... Uh, auto rifle and a preacher shotgun, Mark 20. I got a couple. I got one quest which I'll need to talk to Savalo about. It's about my subclass. I think, it, yeah. Whenever I'm gonna go talk to him guardian. now. He's one of the Vanguard, which are the three. There are three members of the Vanguard, and they oversee all guardians and the missions that they over that they take up. Um, with the one we're talking to first is going to be Commander Zavala. He oversees uh, Titan interactions and will be our uh, Titan specific Good vendor. To have you back. A new guardian, the hope of the city grows stronger today. Welcome to the tower, Titan. Your shoulders will help us hold up the weight of the walls. Give me your report. New members of the Vanguard deserve our support. Take this armor, guardian, wear it proudly. Good work. Alright, getting instructions to equip my new piece of armor, which. It, my current one was 5, this one's 18. Great. It helped us a lot. We're going to continue moving forward. I, oh, I can't afford some of these. Let's, uh, we got a chest piece. And those are level 6, so let's grab a helmet. That way when I reach level 4, I'll be able to wear it. Kept in good condition. Four. Guardian. The other one is Cade 6. He, is, he oversees uh, hunter interactions. And he's not exactly the happiest person to be here. Uh, I can give you a description based on his can grimoire. Cade Sox was a daring hunter with a fast ship, a quick gun hand, and an eye of the legendary vault of glass. Of course, he couldn't say no to a challenge, not even the notorious vanguard dare. He lost the bet, to his immense regret. Now following in the footsteps of his fallen friend, Andal Brask, it is Cade's turn to oversee his far-flung brethren as the hunter vanguard in the tower. He works dutifully but longs for a chance to get back into the fight. Uh... Hey. What do you Stay alert up. And then we got Iker Array. She oversees the oh, Warlocks and is the leader of the Hidden. A 
special sect that she has built of different guardians of different types. Uh, I can get into that in a second. Just give me a moment. Uh, Stay safe. Okay. There are differences between factions, classes, and races. With the Exos, they are pretty much uh, a mechanized unit of robots that were once Here. kind of autonomous, but became sentient somewhere during the Golden Age and became uh, dutifully known because of that. It's believed that the Exos have connections to the War Mines, great, which were great AI units that were tasked with uh, warheads and other weapons of mass destruction to help defend the Earth from the attack of the darkness. We'll get more into that as we discover them. Um, there's also the Awoken, which is what Commander Zavala is, as you can see. During the time of the collapse, when the city was under fire, and, well, the world was under fire, and everything seems to be collapsing, the Guardian, the Traveler himself, unleashed a great light that would push back the darkness to at least up to Saturn. Um, there were certain members of humanity that were trying to flee from the Earth in hopes of finding safety in the stars. Those that were caught around the, uh, the asteroid belt were imbued with that light and became what are known as the Awoken, and because they were reawoken as new beings. As you can see by their bright eyes and blue skin and palish skin. Fall and we'll be then you just have, you know, humans, which have been existed always Excuse and me. will continue to exist always because heck, English is just the natural language of the world, apparently. Like in every video game. That pit became After that, there are factions that follow behind that, and then there's the classes, which I've already, which I've gone a little into. Titans are primarily strength class, built with the concept of if I can punch it, it will die. They stand as the walls of the tower, as the metaphorical walls of the tower, and are looking to defend it from all incoming attack, and even take that defense to an offense at times. Then you have the warlocks, scholars, who are imbued with great knowledge of the ways of the light, varying between uh, many different forms, whether it be storm, uh, calming of storms, uh, finding the light within even the void, and uh, looking towards the sun for strength. Uh, then you have hunters, classes that were typically scouts, and look to find uh, an get you back out there. answers for struggles outside in the world, okay. as well as guiding those who find themselves outside the city to the city. I'm going with the pulse rifle because that's what I'm more used to. Pulse rifles are burst rifle weaponry, and I honestly prefer them over just about everything I own. So scout rifles are pretty decent too. They are single fire rate, long range weaponry, but I'm more, I prefer more of the mid range to close range, especially since I'm a titan. So we're gonna get to orbit since I nope. I have one more thing to do. Or I can go back to orbit. Let's get my ship fixed. Uh, after that, there are three different factions within the city that uh, guardians can pledge themselves to. Those factions belong to. Uh, those factions have different mantras and ideals that they stand behind. You have the Dead Orbit, which believe that our hope should belong outside in the stars, not here in the tower, and that there is n that holding on to the Earth is a fleeting hope. You have the New Monarchy, which believe in a uh, hierarchy within the tower, and believe that uh, the only way we can truly find success is by f looking towards one another and finding those who have great strength to lead us. And then you have the future war cult. Their ideals are still a bit in question. I can go talk to them for a bit. You can read up on them a little. Let's talk to Hideo real quick. You help us. It will not be easy. New battles await us among the stars, but we will we would rather fight on our terms than stay crouched in this coffin as the darkness closes in. We possess the hope the Traveler gave us with its dying breath, we will not allow this hope to wither on a dead earth. We will seed it among the stars. Tell the others about us. 
We'll go talk to future World Cup. We'll call it a war. Uh, now, the, there were other factions that once belonged to the city in the tower, but were uh, kind of destroyed during the war, the faction wars. The faction wars were something that happened during the establishment of the city where too many f hands in the pot. And because of that, there was a re requirement for restriction on how far, how many there could be. Many fell, many left the city, and those who stayed have been welcomed ever since. What does the future bring? We alone have the answer. It has always been war. War between humans, war between species, war between light and darkness. War is the fundamental fabric of the universe. Dare we defy it? Will you help us prepare? Back to the war. I honestly prefer the new monarchy. A, because I like the colors. B, because I like the ideals that they stand behind. The Dead Orbit is one I used to belong to, but I think a better, the best defense, I believe a good offense starts with a strong defense. Within, that means building up what, what, what we once had. We're going to go talk to them real quick and then we'll talk to the last infomercial that we need to. And then we'll get back to order. The idea that Traveler is a bad guy is not one I haven't heard. It's a case of, uh, we don't know enough of the Traveler, and if those I would love to know more, but it's also a case of, uh, for a good cause, Guardian. let me talk, read this real quick. What separates us from the darkness? It is neither our technology nor our strength in battle. It is our mind, civilization, and potential. Why else would the Traveler have chosen us? This last city has been more than a cradle of refugees. It cries out for a guiding hand that can bring out its best. Um, Remember, the idea that the Traveler is a bad guy is not too unheard of, especially when you read further into the Grimoire where... But I, from what we've seen of the from after the Taken King, it's a bit disputed of whether or not. It truly doesn't appear to be, just because the Traveler seemed to stand with those that it believed to be a harmonious balance. There are those who... The darkness kind of stands as something that guides those who want to break away from the balance and break away from what the Traveler may believe to be one's destiny. And it throws things into a bit of a chaos. Yeah, as I'm learning, I have a missing warp drive from my ship. I need to go out and find it. Back in the Cosmodrome, most likely where I last left my ship. As you do. What's the latest, Guardian? We're gonna drop into orbit now. I'll go more into whether or not the Traveler is a bad guy the further we get in. Uh, right now, I don't want to answer that. I don't really talk about that question until we I, I talk a bit more into what go, what happened, because as I said earlier, the fallen here is what I cannot stand is just how much information I have dropping in right now. So much, so much that I don't even need to see right now, just because it's all stuff that does not matter right now. There's three screens of just garbage for a new player. I understand if like you are already at that point in the game. It's great for those who are already that deep into the game, but it's really unnecessary for me. I'm gonna go unlock my jump. Pop this open real quick. I forgot to show this off. This is one of their. Uh Vanity item chests. I won't be able to use anything in it. But that wasn't a bad catch. Got a lot of chroma out of that first one. Can't use it yet. Gotta be level 40. We'll get it later. But let's go back to the earth and go get ourselves a warp drive. I'm level 3 now. Oh, I can't choose another difficulty. On we go then. Into the great beyond. There's so little left out here. We were lucky to even find this ship. A Guardian can't do much to protect the city without one. But it needs a warp drive if we ever hope to fight beyond Earth. And that Cosmodrome is the only place I know where we might still find one. We survived the Fallen once. We can do it again. So like I mentioned earlier, Cosmodrome is pretty much the setting for all launch points within 
the world. Where so much of the world just took off and reached for the endless ages of the stars. Here. If the fallen haven't gotten to it, there might be parts we can This game salvage. just like give us some of the best skyboxes out there. I can probably play this without my uh, HUD on. And it's hard. I already know all the controls. So I just want to be able to take in the beauty of this game. We're gonna head over here to this fallen, this destroyed guardian ship. Looks like some of it's still alive, it's still active. See if we can get any information out of it. The ship's avionics are completely catatonic, but I can call their last This game does a great job with sound design, but that's because a lot of it was originally helped being designed by, uh, what's his name? Oh, who just left it? Who left Bungie shortly after the game? Oh, it's, uh... I don't want to say McDonald, They managed but to restore an information hub here, things. down in the tunnels below. We should check it out. One's already been here. Lucky for me. A map of the entire area. Yeah, it looks actually quite accurate. Like all the blue spaces are ac places we can access. Though some of them we can't access until certain missions. So I might go scan the computers here and get some information on the lay out of the land. We really need to find some warp drive so we can jump to any planet or moon. Our only hope is where we found our ship. We have to go back. Alright. Martin O'Donnell, that's who I was thinking of. Yes, Martin O'Donnell had all of the influence on this. Even They even developed a CD that was later scrapped. Ooh, chest! That was eventually scrapped due to the fact that there was some uh, issue within Bun... There were some internal issues with Bungie and O'Donnell himself. Which is why a lot of the early sound is very much... Very, uh... Not only O'Donnell, too, is, uh... McCartney also had some influence on this. Paul McCartney and Martin O'Donnell worked together to develop the music and sounds for this game. So, you've got a lot of that going for it. The music I just love, it just has a good feel. Ooh, gold chest. Give me some new gauntlets. That looks cool. Those look decent. Scanning for the warp drive. Bad news. It's already in fallen hands. I hope you're ready for this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right into here. Find ourselves back to where we were when the ship was. So I have a pretty much a flashbang right now. And here comes Rixus, the Archon Priest. Details, his purpose and information once I've defeated him. An Archon Priest is not an, or an ordinary opponent. This one belongs to the House of Devils. 
which after the Battle of Six Fronts in the Twilight Gap, we kind of pushed back the Devils to almost a uh, defunct state. But certain members of their leadership, between the Archons, their Servitors, the Servitor Prime, and their Kells, in the walls. Got a warp drive. So, that was Rixus, the Devil Archon. Archon. The Archons are the links between the Fallen and their servitors. We break their loose links, we break the Fallen. Archons are revered amongst the Fallen. It is unknown whether these high priests are the caretakers of the Prime servitors or vicious, or simply vicious arbiters of the Prime's will. Rixus collects the skulls of dead guardians, whether he keeps them as trophies or presents them as offerings to whatever prime he serves. His threat is very real, and his death will be great joy to a city in need of hope. I'm going to go back to the tower now. talk to uh, members of the tower. Like I mentioned earlier, the dregs, which are the two armed, uh, dregs cling to the lowest rung of the fallen society. 
docked of their lower arms in a ritual of humiliation and obedience, drags seek to prove their worth. Only a few will survive to gain promotion and regrow their limbs. Their suicidal bravery is fueled by ambition and shame. As well as the Vandals. Soldiers, brawlers, assassins, and scouts. Vandals are the essential regulars, seasoned regulars, who fill out the skilled roles within a fallen crew. Whether from distance or up close and personal, they are seasoned, efficient killers with an arsenal of weaponry, weaponry and tech to match their bloodlust. See if you can get Ooh, we're gonna need to talk to her. How can I nope. come back safe? Practice of all. Plenty you could use. Okay. You've only just begun your guardian career and already slain an archon. Impressive. Let's see if you can maintain your tenacity. I'm sending you back into action. Fallen forces are strengthening their position to the Jovian and Terrestrial complexes in the Cosmodrome. It's got the areas, then report back report. to me. Travelers like to go. I'm gonna put my HUD back on because I don't know what else there is for me here. I'm pretty sure there's still something. Saw your ship train. You'll put your head on the spike. I'm not mad. The signs are real. Where to begin? Ah, yes. The anger my god. Nothing is impenetrable. I, Hopefully I this is close. Dang it, gotta be level 4. Almost there. How much cooler do they look? How much cooler? They do have a nice color to them. Always a pleasure. Oh, have you guys heard about the uh, UCLA yet? There's been a shooting. Two of them are already found dead. I don't think they've uh, captured the gunman yet. Go into this real quick. The dark within. Investigate the reports of a hidden power within me. Relays within the array tower. It is terrible about the shooting. Too many college shootings. There are reports that the fallen back at the Cosmodrome are keeping a pretty tight guard on the old Skywatch. It could be one of their leaders, or it could be something valuable. The speaker's asking guardians to look into it. Watch is just on the other side of the steps. And it's surrounded by fog. Well, I'm ready if you are. Turn the hubby back off. I don't want to use it when I'm playing. I don't want to be difficult as possible. I don't even know where I'm going. How many times I've done this mission? You know, this place must have been amazing before the collapse. Thousands of humans boarding the colony ships. Off to build cities beyond. Skybox is gorgeous. You never get past that. Up the hill. The building with the radar? That's the Skywatch. Oh, that thing. Yeah. One of the things they did really well with this game is set, like, even in a post-apocalyptic world, you still want to explore it and still want to interact with it. Because it still feels like it's there's life here. Like there's still hope. Even if it's overtaken by... Enemies. Yeah, level four. 
Bit of unlocked. Yep, that's exactly what I need. Save that for later. So what I just unlocked was my Fist of Havoc, which I will demonstrate to you guys soon. Still don't have my melee yet. One thing this game does really well is audio cues. Like you'll know when things are are reloaded and when your abilities are charged. Right, I'm wielding a sniper rifle. Now. It's not right now. Probably switch that. I need the shotgun for this. All right. We're in. This was one of Skywatch's old array stations, a link to the lunar colonies. So I've just entered a no respawn zone. Just what the darkness. Dead end. Fall and seal this gate. I can get it open. Hmm, do I really want to go in somewhere that's labeled restricted even before? Fallen had locked it up. Fallen really didn't want anybody getting in or out. Ooh, that looks creepy. What is this? Lots of motion ahead. Feeling about this. The hive. It's the hive. There's a wizard here. You have to kill it. The hive haven't been on Earth in centuries. The darkness could be a lot closer than we think. We should probably get moving. Gold chest over here. Yeah. Got a rocket launcher. 